As the country digests and probes the decade of state capture, one of the names that have been synonymous with the scandal is the public relations company Bell Pottinger. Its role in the scandal is now portrayed in a documentary. It's called Influence. We told the documentary looks at the dangers that lurk with uh, masters of disinformation using new digital tools to wage propaganda wars, undermining the very fabric of democratic societies. The film is co-directed by well-known commentator and journalist Richard Poplack, along with uh, Diana Neely, who says it uh, proved uh, controversial when it debuted in a competition at the Sundance Film Festival earlier this year. In just a moment, uh, Richard Poplack will join us via Skype, but let me give you a sense of what we're all in store for. <coughs> well, I've had just about every piece of filth written about me. I just think maybe if I just told the truth for once, told the whole story, Maybe I'll be better judged. The story of Tim Bell is really the story of influence over the last 50 years. They found it. Bell passenger, Tim Bell. The great Tim Bell, Lord Bell, who was Mrs. Thatcher's favourite ad man, masterminded her three election victories. I didn't really know what I was good at, but I was a good salesman. Now, you moved advertising into a workable weapon. This was the beginning of a very new and burgeoning industry. They keep on saying he worked for Pinochet. I did not. I never met Pinochet. But well, you, did, you did meet him? I did meet him. I met him in, ten years earlier in, um, in uh, Santiago. Are you allowed to know all your clients? Um, you can know all those except, unfortunately, the government. A $500 million contract in Iraq. As a journalist, you start thinking, what's happening here? Something's not okay. What went wrong? The British public relations company, Bell Pottinger, stands accused of fomenting racial tensions in post-apartheid South Africa. You know, this is a perfect environment to influence narratives and play on fear. against one of the biggest PR firms in the world. And we begin to excavate the rot, the tooth. Foreign leaders and dictators, big corporations, Russian oligarchs. He's the guy who behind the scenes can fix it. Is this how the world works? It's one of the ways the world works. Go anywhere, do anything was very much the bumper sticker. Well, the rot and the truth. Richard Poplack, good afternoon to you. In the state capture project, then, how significant was this company, Bell Pottinger? Well, yeah, they were hugely significant, Jeremy. I mean, one of the things they did for uh, Gupta Incorporated was effectively run their messaging. Um, in the early days, there was this insistence that they only worked for Oak Bay Capital, which, of course, was the Gupta's um, consortium. But as the Gupta leaks um, made very, very clear, and you, re you recall when the Gupta leaks saga broke, uh, as that made very clear, Bell Pottinger were intimately involved in, in, in crafting messaging for the uh, entire um, Zupta incorporated uh, regime. So, yeah, I mean, th th there are words. Um, th there were coinages that existed in South African political discourse before this, like white monopoly capital, um, that, that are now just part of our every, uh, everyday discourse, and that is courtesy of uh, the former British multinational Bell Pottinger. Richard, as repugnant as all of this was, um, in public relations terms, they were hugely successful. Uh, they were a brilliantly successful company. Um, they were, I, I mean, uh, Lord Bell, I think he won the Public, Relation, uh, public Relations and Communications Association um, Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, these uh, men and women were very, very well regarded in the industry. That said, Bell Pottinger had a reputation for being willing to, as, as Lord Bell said, go anywhere, do anything for anyone. What was important was, of course, the money. But not just the money, it was also the power. Um, and what the film really is about, to some extent, is the networks of power and money 
that fuel the 0.1%, who, all conspiracy theories aside, really do kind of run the world. Um, it's uh, an astonishing um, thing to learn how these networks are shaped, how they're massaged, and how very, very rich and powerful people look after themselves. Uh, Richard, uh, accompanied or assisted by the entire tobacco industry, it would appear to me, having looked at the trailer, um, Lord Timbell himself, uh, what was he like uh, to talk to? And at the end of all of this, was he repentant? So I just want to say one thing about uh, secondhand smoking 60 cigarettes a day. Um, it doesn't make you feel particularly well. Um, so maybe in Kosasan at Lamini Zoom is onto something. Thank you for the cigarette ban. Uh, but but um, I, I do want to say this. He was an immensely charming man, very bright, um, very, very funny at times. What he was not was repentant. Um, I, I suppose there was a part of me, me and Diana as, as directors and as writers who were hoping to have this kind of come to Jesus moment with uh, Lord Bell, where he'd get down on his knees and, and pray for forgiveness. That never happened. He was astonishingly unrepentant right till the very end. Um, and he did pass away um, about 18 months after we, after we did these interviews. Uh, and right to the very end, he stood by what he did. Uh, he had his own morality. It was his. And he didn't blink. Just in conclusion, what lesson do you learn from all of this? I want, I mean, how do we prevent this from happening again? Yeah, look, you, you know, a lot of audiences who have watched this uh, have found it very bracing and very scary. But I think what the film shows is that in a country like South Africa, where investigative journalists were able to out the rot, then on the back of that, civil society and everyday South Africans, opposition politicians, banded together to provide what is effectively the back line of democracy. And that is, we went out there and we fought, right? And when you fight for your rights, and when you fight for what is right, you can take down the most powerful public relations company in the world and a man as powerful as Lord Bell. So I, I think there are some very, very positive lessons that have come out of all of this. Um, we're, we're still a country in trouble. We're still a country with our divisions and our separations, but we banded together for a moment and we won. Just uh, finally, you're doing the documentary festival circuit at the moment. I referenced uh, Sundance. When do we see it in this country? All right, so that's a brilliant question. We have an announcement coming uh, in, in several weeks of when our premiere will be and, and, and who will be our partners with that. Uh, we're very, very excited about it. I, I think you could say that the film should uh, premiere in South Africa within the next couple of months or so. Um, we're enormously, enormously excited to take it home. It's, it's been doing its kind of uh, victory lap around the world right now, but I think uh, we, we want to bring it home and we want to show it to, to our people here. The uh, documentary is called Influence. That's uh, Richard Poplack from the uh, Daily Maverick.